Hello everyone and welcome to my Support Misfortune guide. Misfortune is typically played in the AD carry position, but ever since she saw play in the support role in Professional League of Legends, people started to think outside the box. The pick was merely a counter pick against the enemy Zyra support, but Misfortune has a lot of tools that are extremely useful in the support position. Therefore, let's first talk about the pros and cons of support misfortune. What makes support MF an attractive pick is her ability to poke in lane, especially combined with Arcane Comet. She has an easy time proccing her Spell Thief's Edge due to her huge range on Make It Rain. This spell is her main tool in the support role, as it comes with an extremely potent 60% AoE slow and sets up plays for herself and her teammates. Moreover, Misfortune's W ability provides a huge amount of out-of-combat movement speed, which allows her to roam the map unusually quickly to provide and check for vision and to gank mid lane during the lane phase once you've established lane priority or got a favorable back timing in your lane. Talking about W, the attack speed is highly useful when you need to take down enemy wards or towers. On top of that, your E spell provides vision, which allows you to check bushes from great distances. And last but not least, your ultimate provides crazy damage in team fights and all ins, as long as you build the correct items. You are like an additional AD carry damage wise in the late game, comparable to even an AD version of brand support. However, there are some significant cons to playing support misfortune. The biggest con is probably that you do not have a form of hard CC in your kit. Hence, it is impossible for you to peel for your teammates or for yourself. Additionally, Misfortune is rather squishy and an easy target for enemy assassins. Luckily though, there are ways to patch these weaknesses at least a little bit. The biggest issue with support misfortune is, however, that people don't play her correctly and end up feeding. You don't need to be one of those people, so let me tell you how to play support misfortune properly. Firstly, you need to pick the correct summoner spells, and those are always exhaust and flash. Flash is a no-brainer really, but it is of utmost importance that you go for exhaust and not for ignite or barrier. Exhaust allows you to peel for your teammates and for yourself as it hard counters assassins. And you cannot deal with assassins in any other way. When you go for a kill, you never want to get so close that you could even use Ignite. Misfortune needs to keep her distance. Barrier is fine maybe, but Exhaust is just better because it also protects your teammates. Secondly, you must have the correct items in order to be useful. And Misfortune has some great options here. Obviously start with Frostfang and upgrade to Eye of Frost as soon as possible, as you will be spamming your E on cooldown in lane. As for boots, you can choose Boost of Swiftness or Ninja Tabby, and sometimes Mercury Treads against full AP teams for example. Rule of thumb, if they have an AD Assassin or a Draven, pick Tabby, else pick Swifties. Your first real item must be Duskblade. Not only do you need to get adaptive attack damage from your runes, but also the Night Stalker and Blackout passives are extremely potent tools for vision control. With that item, you will never use your red trinket without finding any wards, because even if Duskblade is on cooldown, it will show you if you are spotted due to the Night Stalker buff disappearing. Your next item must be Black Cleaver. Not only does it put you on maximum cooldown reduction, but also does it provide you some crucial HP to survive enemy all-ins. On top of that, the armor shred gives your ulti a huge boost and also buffs physical damage from your teammates. After Black Cleaver, you buy Edge of Night for even more lethality, health and also for the spell shield active. Once you get this item, you are unstoppable. If used correctly, the spell shield will guarantee a successful ultimate in every teamfight. Your last item slot will be a mortal reminder in most cases, as your ult can provide an AoE healing reduction effect. In many games, you want to buy the Executioner's Calling component already right after the lane phase, since healing effects are very dominant and powerful in the current meta. 
In the rare cases in which you don't need Grievous Wounds, your last item is Lord Dominic's Regards. You probably notice we don't have any room for AP items. And yes, AP items on MF are just bad. You buy Frostfang for the gold and the wards. Never fall into the AP trap. AP misfortune does not work. Accept that. As far as rune pages are concerned, I found one keystone that works guaranteed, which is Arcane Comet. I will, however, start to experiment with Glacial Augment or even with Kleptomancy in the future, as those keystones might also be very strong on support misfortune. But hey, I'm here today to tell you what definitely works, so look at this rune page. You got Arcane Comet for more poke, as its internal cooldown perfectly syncs up with your E cooldown and the slow from E guarantees the Comet to hit its target. Mana Flow Band is also a must because E is very mana intensive, especially during the lane phase. Use your E whenever you can get a Mana Flow Band proc to stack it as quickly as possible. In the next row we have Absolute Focus, since Misfortune scales with AD extremely hard and Transcendence is not needed because we max out CDR with items with ease. Finally we got Gathering Storm in the Sorcery Path. You won't proc Scorch often enough in lane to make it worthwhile, and Gathering Storm guarantees your effectiveness in the mid to late game teamfights. Your secondary path shall be Inspiration with Biscuit Delivery and Cosmic Insight. The Biscuits buff up your lane phase and give you some more much needed mana. You need both Mana Flow Band and Biscuit Delivery to be able to spam your E in lane, even with the mana regen from your support item. Cosmic Insight is also vital as 45% CDR ensures that you got your ulti in every teamfight and also gives you more access to your E, which is your only utility spell. On top of that, it provides crucial CDR for your Edge of Night active and for your Exhaust, both of which ensure your and your team's survival in teamfights. As far as stat bonuses are concerned, Support Misfortune needs Adaptive Force, Adaptive Force and Armor. You don't need any extra attack speed as much, since you look for plays with your ulti instead all the time. The extra armor helps you to survive the lane phase. In lane, you play passively and poke with Make It Rain. Therefore, you start with E level 1. Reaching level 2, you can get a point in W if you need to, for example against Brand or Zyra, so you can dodge skill shots more effectively. Against tank supports, you can get a point in Q, and look for Q-bounces in addition to your e harass. From now on, put a point into E whenever possible, so you got it at rank 5 when you reach level 9. Your W stays at rank 1 until level 14, because you need to max Q second. Extra points in Q will greatly increase your DPS when your attack damage starts to rise during the mid-game. Positioning-wise, you need to keep your distance so you can always trade favorably in lane. You should be fishing for Q-bounces and spam your E on the enemy laners. When they try to walk out of your E spell, you can also walk up to them for a quick laugh tap. After the lane phase, you run around and push the vision line on the map as far and as safely as possible. Always check the bushes with your E. Never face check anything. Your Duskblade will help you with that. Always follow the mantra, be unseen or be with team. It sounds silly, but if you do that, nothing can go wrong. During fights, think of yourself as an AD carry. Position like an AD carry, you are an AD carry. You can carry team fights, no doubt, so don't approach foolishly just to get caught. Alright, I hope that helped you and you've learned something new today. If you did, let me know by leaving a like. Also, share this guide with everyone who might foolishly build AP items on Misfortune. Let's liberate the world from bad AP support misfortunes. Together we can make it. The gameplay you're seeing right now, by the way, is just an average game I had. Not an epic hard carry or anything, but it gives you a nice insight into what support misfortune can and cannot do. Have a nice day, and see you in the next video.
Double kill. 